Why, yes, I will cook noodles for you. <laughs> oh, yes, have some fine noodles. <laughs> favorite toppings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Your noodles, madam. Fibrous. Mm. Mm. Salty. Mm. Needs more salt. Mm. Perfect. Hey, stop! No, don't! Just, no, 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 no! Stop! Yeah, you! Don't you know that those aren't actually noodles? It's just... It's just yarn or string of some sort. That's why it's so fibrous. Don't eat that! They're so tasty. I don't care. No. Just no. No. Go on. Go. Hey everyone, this is Brittany at Don't Make the Art. Glad you could join us again. This week we're going to do some satin stitch style embroidery. So this is an example uh, that my great grandmother made. I remember watching her do this and she taught me to do this when I was around five and well cross stitching and then I eventually learned this kind. So here is one of my pieces. It's not very big it's just a little base clef looks like a sad face oh i never noticed that oh yeah well it's supposed to be a base clef which makes me super happy but i guess it could also be a sad face <laughs> now i'm gonna think of that every time i see that oops wham, wham. so this is a really nice way to pass the time because you can always just stick a little bit of thread and a needle safely secure the needle and something like this in your purse or whatever and wherever you are you just make some art so um, I was just gonna flip through this but briefly this is specifically 18th century embroidery techniques but you can see the kind of stuff you can do um, this is an outfit where they did some heavy embroidery um, so this this has all kinds of examples and goes through some methods so here's a flower so and I've, I've seen some contemporary artists who use this as their paint. And I, I, the most recent one, I was just really impressed with her work. And it's nice to see that people still do that. And it's not just the traditional stuff. She was doing all kinds of funky things. So 
Here's one I started uh, several months ago. This was going to be and will be eventually a spoonbill bird. So this is its neck and part of its back and I was working on doing some of the feathers around here and it's obviously not done but I was going to show that but I'm going to let you see. So this is Thanks. my little loom and you see I'll show you how to set this up. So first I'm going to move my needle so I don't Oh, I guess it's not tied off yet. Well, don't use your teeth, people. Um, Again, don't eat the heart. You're trying to eat the, eat, you're trying to eat the eat strings it. already. Did you eat today? Well, I've had, had some paint chips, but they got a little milk in them. <laughs> don't, say that. don't say that. Come on, man. They're going to think we're crazy now. <laughs> or not. <laughs> so, um... On the edge of the loom. I like these small ones. They come in different sizes and they're not very expensive. You can find them about anywhere that sells fabric. And they have this little screw. So I'm going to unscrew that. And then apparently I need to do that a little bit more. Get it nice and loose to you slide this top piece off. And then out comes the bottom. So if this was a finished piece, I then go iron that. This is super wrinkly because I just shove it in a drawer. But to get a new piece going, um, so you get the, the bottom one, so the one that doesn't have the screw on it, and you want to kind of get it situated. So if you're doing something very, with a very specific shape, see I'm just doing a random piece of fabric so I don't really care which part of it has it, but if, if you do care, maybe really pay close attention to what you're doing. And then you slide the top one over the bottom and then you kind of, before you tighten it, you want to pull the fabric tight so you don't have a bunch of wrinkles. And you want it tight but not super tight. I've noticed if you get it too tight, um, you can get some problems with the cloth tearing a little bit if you accidentally pull a little too hard on your thread. Okay, and then we tighten the loop and before you get it all the way tight you can you know do one last check of the fabric i just have some terrible wrinkles in there but that's i'm just gonna pretend those aren't there because that's what i do with lots of things that cause problems if any of you out there are cosplayers this would be a good one for you guys okay so i picked some colors here um I decided to go with like a viney, goofy plant with some pink and blue flowers. So just something not real, it's that popped out of my head. Um, we probably won't get to see too much of the process because it is a fairly slow process, but I'll show you how to get it set up. And maybe later I'll share a little bit of what I get done. So first I'll show you the kind of needle. You can get different lengths of needles. So these are... Um, See, you have, you have to get one that has a little eye on it. So that little tiny loop you can kind of see. Because that's where your thread is going to go in through. And this is always the tricky part to me is getting the thread in. Well, first... Mm -hmm. I'm got... in the same boat. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I first need a segment of the thread. Oh, and the kind of thread. So if you go to the store... A lot of times you'll see thread that's for embroidery machines and stuff. I mean, you can get that and use it. Just pretend you're the machine. Because that's usually, it's a nice, it's a thin um, string and it's nice and silky. has this nice gloss to it. I really like it. This stuff I, I have is a particularly old brand that I don't think is manufactured anymore. I got on eBay and found some more of it because someone got some at a garage sale for me. It's still my favorite, so I'll be sad when I completely run out of this stuff. But I've noticed the stuff I see in the stores is pretty decent, too. And some people also use the thicker... She got it through first try. Woo. Don't mean to interrupt, my bad. Well, no, I just... I didn't even... I was so busy talking about that stuff, I didn't even notice. <laughs> Maybe that's the trick. Uh, yeah. Just talk about random stuff just, and There boom. you go. You know, if you are having trouble, um, I was always taught to just kind of like that and get them all the threads together um and usually i have to do that so i was like oh that'll be easy to show and then this is like the one time in my life that it went right through like, today, today will be the one time we can actually try to taste 
the art, I guess. <laughs> That's true. You could at least sample the flavor sensation. I don't think it's any good, though. It doesn't really have much of a flavor. It just tastes like nothing. <laughs> Better than paint chips? Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe if I added a little milk, it'd be a little better. Oh, so I guess I forgot to show that part. You want to make a knot at the end. So I, I got it through the string, and then you see it. I want to give, give you a little more thickness. It's double through there. So um, it's just one continuous string through here because I pulled it even. And then I made a knot towards the end. And you want... The knot's not going to be very thick when with just one knot. So what I do, this will be my third one. I'll show you. You have to, you make, so you make the loop, um, and then you have to kind of go slowly. So again, this is loop number three. Let me try again. That got a little tangled. Um, see, I did it smoothly that on that one, and now it's all like. Oh, you're looking. Let me stop. The pressure is on. I know. So much pressure. Okay, there. So I'm, I'm just slowly pulling it through. And you want to watch because you want it to end up right on top of the one that you already have. It's okay if it slips a little bit and you get another one in front or something. That's going to be small enough. And I usually try to do three or four of those to get a nice big knot. And that way that you just have less chance, especially if it's on a shirt or something, there's less chance of it just kind of um, getting bumped loose or if you do have to wash it. I would suggest hand washing anything like this, but if you do throw it in the machine or even with hand washing, that's still a lot of vigorous action that you want to make sure this is going to stay on. Three. Okay, so we have our needle threaded and it's trying to tangle up. Um, a lot of times I like to get a nice long thread on there just so I don't have to reload it too frequently but the trick is you're more likely to get knots and tangles so you may have to work a little bit slower but it saves the irritation of having to re-thread a needle a whole bunch all right so we're gonna go to the back side to get it started and again if you're really specific on where you want things then you know just carefully plan this you, know, you can see I don't have any markings on here, so I'm just kind of freehanding this. I do that sort of thing a lot. Um, if you want to be more accurate with your design, you can get some sort of pin that doesn't bleed too much, like a regular ballpoint pin, or even a pencil or something, and just kind of lightly draw your design on it. But I'm going to just poke it in some random spot here. That's what she said. And then you want to make sure, so see there's like a little loop there, that's a little bit of string that's caught. So you want to, you, you end up having to tug and on the alternating strings. You don't often get, you would think that you could just pull on both of them and whichever one it'll come forward, but for some reason, I guess just the way they stick together, you have to do one at a time until you find the one that's the troublesome one or not or they just sit there it's it's weird okay and then let's see I'm doing this vine so I'm gonna do about straight across from this so see I'm just putting you can do it where you I could just demonstrate that where you put your needle in and then go back to the back and pull it all the way through um, I used to do it like that a lot, but then I learned this faster way, but this is still a useful technique that I'll use if I'm doing where my stitches are having to make a bend or a curve or something. It's a little easier sometimes to do that or just filling in tricky spots. Because um, then, yeah, the, the tricky spot about this is you have to kind of, you know, know where your needle is. And what I'll do is if I'm do coming... Do not poke yourself. Yeah. If you want, get a thimble. Put that on. Um, I don't know if you can see this too well, but if I'm not sure... Because you don't want to just simply stick it through and, oh, that's not the right spot. I mean, you can, but it'll take a while. Is I'll push with my... I'll show you how I'm holding the needle. I'm holding my needle at a just a little bit of an angle and pushing down and sliding it. Oh, is that here? 
So I'm just kind of sliding. That's what it looks like on the back. But what it does on the front is it acts as a guide because you can kind of see your needle there and you can guide it to the spot you want to go and like, oh, okay, that's where I want it to go through. Don't eat the art is not liable if you guys poke yourself <laughs> trying to follow along with us. Yeah, we, we can't make you sign a waiver, but just, yeah. You, I've poked myself a few times. It's, it's really not that bad. But still, try not to do it. All right, so there I had that one getting a little loopy. <laughs> and so there, that's all set now. Okay. But I'm going to show you now the way that I prefer for the bulk of my work is I'll get my needle right next to the thread. I, if, for the satin stitching, it's basically painting with thread. So you really want everything really close. So I carefully put it in. And it's nice too with the way fabric is woven. It's almost like it's a little grid work. So you can often find just the right little hole um, based off the little grid and then here I'm doing the guiding of my needle and, you know if you slide it slide it through a little bit as a test and oh see that's too far over so I want to scoot it a little bit more and I'll just kind of back and forth like that and that's about where I want it but see how we didn't put it all the way through here I'll, I'll show that again we didn't put it all the way through to the back all right so you don't want to pull too tight because then you might start getting a bit of a gap here, I mean, I do have a little bit of a gap, but it's not a big one, but especially if it's a really light or delicate kind of material, that can really start tearing a hole in it if you get too tight. And I've, I've had some pieces that just, yeah, it got too big a hole and it wasn't really functional anymore. So just pay attention as you're going. If you notice that you're getting the threads too tight, you can, if it's not too far along, you can take the tip of your needle and slip it under a few of the more re like two no more than maybe two or three of the more recent stitches and then kind of just gently tug up a little bit and that'll loosen them up again if you try to do too many you can get to have problems so if you do have a large stretch that you want to do just stick with the two or three and then go to the next two or three and just slowly work them it's kind of like shoelaces you know you can't really loosen the lower ones if the top ones aren't loose yet so you have to kind of work that chain down but anyway I'm just gonna go ahead and get this going a bit but see what when you go through the top it's easier because it's so fast to so see we we just poked it down in there and then poked it back up through where and that's that distance there you see of the material covering the um, needle that's where our stitch is going to be if we do it right <laughs> and see how I always slow down at the very end just to make sure because sometimes the the two strings will tangle when they're extra baggy and if you pull it tight while they're tangled you'll often get these knots that you just can't really get undone easily so I just go you know it's always worth that extra half second or so at the end to make sure they're not tangling like that because yeesh terrible problems so do, 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 do. see I went pretty fast and then I slowed down there at the very end and those tucked in just just nicely and then we're going again and this is this is a very relaxing activity you know it's making art but it's in this very easy it's kind of like the, how doing dishes can be one way people kind of let their mind wander whatever but with this you're actually making art in the process and there is a bit of creativity since it is a kind of art but at the same time it's with the way the nature of the stitches are it's I come the back. nice and relaxing speaking of relaxing we have the opposite which is a small child that is the opposite of relaxing especially when they have all the energy you could possibly wish to have in your lifetime but they can be fun. Oh yeah, super fun. Especially her, she's strange sometimes. She is, it's because she's mine. But she is doing her thing. What color is that? Yellow. Oh, that's yellow. Are you sure it's not purple? No. 
You're not sure? What are you eating? You're I... not eating art, are you? No. Uh -huh. Don't eat the crayons. Don't eat the crayons. Goobler, yeah. I just was eating some medicine. Some medicine? What kind of medicine? Are you sick? Oh, is it one of your vitamins? Oh. Yeah, Flintstone's vitamins. She's okay. She's not sick. We're good. We're good. <laughs> so we've got a little bit of this going here. You can see, you know, you saw how each stitch was made. And... See if I can show you guys the threading. Is it focusing? Alright, so. Two. I, just, I know it's kind of weird, but I just kind of lick it if it was frayed like it was. And let's see, it should be easier to just slide in. kind of just pull it through until you find that other end and then they're even. It just makes it easier for tying and make sure you get as much thread in a usable position so you don't have to waste too much. So here we've got those two ends roughly together. Make sure that's all pulled down. Do standard loop and tie it. Make sure you've got both ends. Uh, I guess I, yeah, I didn't quite, so try again. And there, we've got both. Grab them, pull through, try to leave a little space at the end. It's easier to leave more than to wish you had left a little bit more. So, um, and we do another because this is a small enough knot, like you can barely notice any thickness there. And that would just pull right through your material. So, another loop. And then you very carefully try to make sure it lines up with that one. See, it's kind of going to land off to the side. With practice, you'll be able to land it more on top of the knot. There, I didn't quite make it. It was off to the side a bit, but it's close enough that by the time we make another one, it might be more, that those will still be brought together. So let's see if we can do that. Um, I did out of practice. Oh, there we go. So see, that was a nice thick one because we had those two knots that were small but close to each other so that when we put the third one it was a lot thicker. I'm going to try to get one more. I usually do three to four occasionally. I do an extra one or so. I'm just always really nervous about things coming unraveled. There we go. Nice thick knot. Check it out. Sorry, it's blurring and refocusing, and, but anyway, so our needle is loaded up and ready to go for another round. Here's what we have so far. Not a ton, but more than yesterday. Okay, let's just um, get it started again here. Let's see where I want to pick up. So I'm going to do my guiding thing, my guiding trick. There we go, that's where I want it. Pull it through, make sure you have it flipped over. So see, we've got one string all the way through and the other one is looping out. So we find which one that is and pull it in. 
in a gentle tug in the final knot. All right. And so I did this backwards. It would have been easier for me to put it through here because then I could have held it this way and looped around, but I'll make do. Pulling it through. Slowly. It's a little slower going at the beginning when you have a larger or longer string. Good morning. Yeah, is that your elephant seal? No, it's Chikorita. Oh, it's oh, that's right, that's Chikorita. Where's this one? You had to go to work. You are snoozing. How about some of that new cereal you picked out at the store? It's purple. Yes. Yes? Purple cereal. Well, that's just saying. Alright. See, she made a And if you're gonna pause to go do something else or put this back in your bag, I always do that where I kind of poke it in and then back out like that just so it's stable and as long as you're not rubbing your hand on it this way you're not going to get poked so there all right guys so i just want to show you i did a little bit more of part of the vine and then i added these three little chunks here they look kind of like leaves but it's actually the little base that the flower will emerge from so i'll add some pink and purple petals in our next episode featuring the embroidering stuff and I'll probably also show you how to do something like this because you have to start and stop like I'll do one of these and instead of hopping over if I still have thread I go ahead and tie that off and then do that one tie it off and then do that one and um, that way you don't have a bunch of webbed strings in the back that might cause issues so anyway that's how far we got, and you'll see a lot more added next time we do this. Ta-da! Okay, guys, so this is a great example of how not to store your sewing material. Look at that. That is stuff I will likely not be able to use unless I want to spend hours um, untangling. don't even know why this stuff isn't here. Probably because it was a stringy, ropey thing. Alright. Um, so I'm going to have to cut away a bunch of that stuff. And so here's a great don't do it. No. <coughs> Just try to take care of your stuff. Maybe get, I, I don't yet have a solution other than maybe something that has little pockets for each one or a little piece of tape or little bags for each one but whatever you do don't do this don't do it no film guy here with don't eat the art i want to appreciate you guys for watching we just wanted to show you just a little bit on how to do this i want to learn this too this is a very long process, so in the future, we're gonna show a little bit more. But at the moment, this is what y'all get, just to show how to start it, how to do it. As always, Brittany Benson is amazing. She's also learning how to do it. That's why we got the book. You can probably find this book at the library if you're really interested on how to do it even more. This is usually an end product right here. So again, I wanna say I appreciate you guys watching Don't Eat the Art. Please stay tuned. Next week, Halloween episode, we're gonna be doing pumpkin carvings. I'm going to be in that. 
But again, you'll never see me. Appreciate y'all. Have a great day. Yo, film guy here. We got the little one right here. She calling her right beside us. We doing the thing. But I just realized I can be a little artistic as well. Left hand. <laughs> Look at that. Look how cool that is. See? Oh, and I knocked the crayons off the thing. Whoops. Oh, no. Whoops. Whoops.